Hey guys, um, I get a lot of questions on forums about the Tronxy uh, Core XY printers. Uh, I run uh, a couple of Chidi Tech printers which are great out of the box. They're probably seen as being um, one of the great enclosed printers um, that you can get straight off the shelf and start printing things like ABS with. The Tronxy, however, is a kit um, and a lot of older reviews pretty much write them off. They were pretty shocking in the earlier days, but like many Chinese things, they go to market before they're really refined. And then they rely on a forum to um, frankly do the hard work in, in our R&D sense for them. Um, so I thought I'd put together this short video just to talk about what I've done when I've uh, sat back and thought about how you could put together an X5 SA Pro, and the Pro is important. Um, and produce a pretty good printer with minimal effort. I guess the, the TLDR, too long, uh, didn't read version is that the framework of the Pro is pretty good for what you get for the money um, because it incorporates uh, these more expensive style rails uh, for a pretty good price and 330 by 330 by 400 mil uh, print area which makes it um, pretty cool for under 500 Australian dollars delivered. And they do stock them in an Australian warehouse, and I'm sure they do in things like US warehouses as well. So mine arrived, uh, frankly, overnight and put it together pretty quick. There's still a couple of small gaps in the design. Um, these brackets don't sit flat, so there's a small space on Thingiverse, although uh, I'm sure you could frankly put anything about two, two and a half mil thick under there before talking down those couple of bolts. And uh, I haven't done, there is a, a design that couples the two Z motors together. I haven't bothered with that. Uh, I haven't found the need um, myself personally. And the real exposure is the CR10 style printhead that comes with the machine. So you're pretty much buying it for the framework. Um, despite what they tell you about the uh, cloned Bowden extruder being a good idea. Uh, I, I personally don't think it is. Um, the, then there's a number of people fitting different extruders to them. Sorry about the janky um, video work, but I'm just doing this off the cuff. I've fitted a BQH2. There's also uh, the E3D Hamera, um, which is quite a bit heavier and bulkier and people are fitting an orbiter and also a couple of Voron uh, homebrew extruders. But the nice part about the BQH2 is uh, by the time you print a small plate and stick it on, everything's pretty much there. You just have to join up a few wires. And it's, uh, it's about half the weight of the Hemera, which it pains me to say because um, the concept is probably at its core, uh, a copy of a couple of E3D ideas around uh, heat sink locations and things and gearing up the stepper motor, um, but it's just been executed a little bit better in China in an all-in-one unit. What I also did do with my BQ is, uh, let's see if I can get this, uh, the standard uh, throat does have a Teflon liner. I don't know that my iPhone's gonna play ball, there it is. Um, so I did order and it arrived in about four days from AliExpress, an all metal throat and replaced it. Pulling these things apart and putting them back together is actually remarkably simple. And much like the, the Tronxy printer, the BQ extruder also went to market way too early and had a bunch of problems with the gears meshing. About, uh, this is probably about six months into the release of this extruder and the one I, I got out of the box was fine. Um, so that was a real relief. I ended up staying uh, with the stock heater cartridge and the stock thermistor. Uh, so that was really easy because they just slid in. And I haven't actually found much temperature drift. Um, I also haven't been using thermal paste to connect the heater cartridge, even though it ships with it. Uh, I'm only finding maybe a one degree, two degree float in the PID adjusted temperatures. So, uh, I don't think the thermal conductivity is really an issue, to be honest. Um, it probably is on some high-end machines, um, 
the guys who did the mosquito hot end, I guess, really started pushing boron based paste. Um, but for the medical field that they come out of, it probably makes sense. But for this, I think it's probably a little bit overbaked because it does seal the heat of cartridge in there. I also took a 50mm uh, fan mount off uh, Thingiverse, but that didn't really work for me, so I designed my own up from scratch as well as my own um, mount for the BQ um, chassis of the extruder, and that was pretty easy. Uh, just a quick bit of work in SketchUp, but I'll throw those on Thingiverse. The only thing I did really end up taking from Thingiverse is someone had this neat, um, neat fan that, uh, shroud that plugs straight in um, to the 50 mil fan and that allows me direct access uh, to the extruder and I found that really handy so I have repurposed that. I did have to shift the sensor mount um, over on its own and created a, a bracket for that. I'm sorry my iPhone's not playing ball but I figured the information was um, more handy than anything. Oh, and the other thing is, uh, Aaron, shout out to Aaron Greengrass uh, on the Facebook Tronxy uh, user group, not the official one. Um, he put together, uh, I guess, firmware um, for this where you just throw it on an SD card and uh, pop it in, turn the machine on, and it loads up um, more conventional firmware rather than the Cheetu um, firmware that ships with it. That means you can do things like PID tune and you can also adjust for now the different geometry of the extruder head. So that really took quite a bit of pain out of it um, for me. And the other thing is the, uh, the actual power supply fan was a little bit noisy so I printed, um, I guess it might have been an Ender 3 or some sort of generic um, shroud for the power supply and that has really quietened that down quite a bit it would be easy to cover that over altogether um, so hopefully that is a useful bit of a summary because i think a lot of people have been watching older videos about the tronxy x5 sa pro and seeing that they were a real write-off uh, for the first few iterations and thinking okay that's not for me i'll go and build a voron or a rat rig or something similar um, and then finding themselves in um, many many weeks of, of hard work which for some people I think is enjoyable and they have the skills for this um, buying this kit and getting it delivered um, you know in a matter of a day or two uh, as well as the extruder strapping that on throwing in a card loading the firmware and printing a couple of little bits um, to sweeten up the chassis to me, uh, if you're sort of a beginner to an intermediate or you wanted to mash out four or five of these for a small print farm, then uh, you could do that very, very quickly, you know, certainly within a week. Um, perhaps the, the only thing left for me to do now is, um, unfortunately these gantries do stick about 20 mil out from the main body. So my next step is to run some vertical rails like a lot of people have done in the forum, um, attach them four vertical rails on each of the corners and box the thing up so I can now start using the high temperature extruder with uh, nylon carbon fibre and polycarbonate and the like as well, which should be sweet. Okay, hopefully that's uh, of some use to people who are trying to navigate a core XY machine without spending too many dollars and without spending too many hours. Uh, building everything from scratch. Cheers.